Ciao, I'm Enzo. I'm Celia. This is a Piazza Talk, a channel about our life in Lucca. And in the Tuscan Hills. Please hit the subscribe button. Grazie. Ciao a tutti. Today we got here for lunch nudi. Nudi or N nudi? Nudi. Can you pronounce it, Celia? Nudi. Yes, it is an Italian uh, sound, ny, nudi, and it means uh, naked. It means naked in Tuscan rather than Italian, no? Well, Tuscan language and Italian, they're pretty similar. It's like, it sounds a bit old fashioned. But in Italian, we say old kind of nude, it means naked. Uh, nude is more kind of a uh, Tuscan quick way to say it. And uh, it means, uh, as I say, naked because it is the, the naked feeling of the ravioli, Tuscan ravioli. So it's great for those who perhaps are, uh, are gluten-free? Well, it depends. If you can have it gluten-free, if you replace uh, the flour with the rice flour. But I'll tell you how to make them gluten-free, if you want to do gluten-free. To make the nudi, we need spinach, then ricotta, and I use ship's ricotta, but you can use any ricotta you can find available where you live there. Ship's ricotta because they make it locally and that's got a very nice taste and uh, it is also slightly sweet and I love it. Then we need uh, nutmeg. Which this is actually a typical Tuscan bowl, isn't it? This splatterware. Yes, yes, we got it in Luca some years ago. And we need an egg. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, you never, you, you always need it. <laughs> Salt and pepper to season. Flour. And uh, Parmigiano-Reggiano, ground, uh, grated Parmigiano-Reggiano. And uh, very important, you need uh, a tool like this. Uh, in Italian, we call this Cumarola. But you can use any tool that looks like this because we are doing them from the saucepan and I show how to do it. And you can also use uh, something that is in Chinese cooking and found in Chinese shop. In fact, any sieve will work. Any, anything that gives you the idea that you can lift it from the saucepan without damaging them and uh, you drain all the water. Uh, the first thing to do is the spinach. So we put them in a saucepan and uh, on a low heat, we cook them so they get uh, reduced, they go down, and uh, we go to remove all the water in the end, squeeze them, and uh, let them cool down. Okay. I put the spinach without water here, but if you feel that it's too dry at the bottom, add uh, a cup, I mean, a little cup of water, I mean, a cup of tablespoons of water. Usually, the water just from washing is more than any. Yes. Okay, they're ready. Okay. And I'm going to put in this colander. You see colander? Uh, yes. So I want to remove all the excess water and I want to cool them down. And now I'm going to try to remove all the water, the excess water. So I press the spinach against the side of the colander. Now they're cool and I'm going to squeeze the last bit of water left here. So I remove as much water as I can. And there's still some. Not the master. Great because of plants. Yeah. <laughs> you know that in the supermarkets here you can buy a bowl of spinach already cooked and squeezed from the deli counter. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yes, yes. Uh, you can find spinach, you can find chard, wild herbs, uh, wild greens, a lot of stuff you can find in the, in the shops here. Okay, and now I've got to chop them in the smaller pieces there.
and now we go to mix the spinach with the ricotta and the other things. So first of all, I put the stuff in this bowl. Okay. Then add the ricotta. Okay, this is enough. I'm gonna start mixing it a bit. Then I'm going to add an egg. Then we add the parmigiano. A couple of tablespoons. The salt. Ground pepper. And the nutmeg. Now, the task they make a Good use of nutmeg is in the many dishes. So, so we had a few days ago the rapini, which is like a cima di rapa, uh, Tuscan style restaurant with uh, butter and nutmeg. And they were really delicious. Okay, and now we start mixing the things. So I start with the fork. And then I finish with my hands. I also like to add a drop of olive oil. Okay, I think that uh, I done what I can do with the fork. And I've got to go ahead with the next stage. So we need a bit of flour here at the bottom of this plate. Okay, okay, I'm going to wet my hands and we go ahead with the next stage. So I'm going to make more. Uh, I'm going to amalgamate these things properly better. Okay, so really quite good actually. So the fork did a good job. Now, what I need to do is to have a little bowl like this, okay? And I'm going to roll it in the flour. Now, I'm using now flour, but if there's a problem with the allergy, whatever, people also use a rice flour here. It's not traditional, but works uh, perfectly well. And I'm going to set aside. You can also use no flour, can't you? Uh, which flour? No flour. No flour. Um, you probably never tried with no flour. <laughs> Shall we try one? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try one with no flour. Okay, so this is no flour. Okay, I'm going to put it on the side of the plate here and see what happens. Okay, more or less we have this size, but uh, I tell you, uh, you, it's quite difficult to make two the same size. So more or less we are ready. So I'm going to do again, little bowl, go to roll it in flour here. Okay, that's number two. Some people then make them in the shape of a uh, little torpedo. Anyway, this is the most common shape, which is the, like a meatball. This is actually, a, it's a Tuscan dish, isn't it? It's a traditional Tuscan dish, but yes. in different parts of Tuscany, they served in different ways. So I think uh, often it's served with a, a very light tomato sauce because you don't want to overpower. You think so, but I also saw the recipe that we in Livorno, they serve it on uh, the top of a uh, ragu, which is a rather strong meat sauce. I think that um, you eat the way you like it, then everybody might say, oh, because it's too light to overpower say, But in reality, everybody do what they like, and everybody can do the same. <laughs> so now they're ready. And uh, we can put them in the fridge uh, for half an hour to rest. But uh, some people don't do it. 
Now the water is boiling, so to add salt. And now go to put the nudi in the water. Two, three at a time, slowly because of the water disintegrates. Last two. Now we, it takes a few minutes, but not too long because uh, otherwise they disintegrate here. So we want to make sure that uh, so I'm going to turn the heat up. Okay. Okay. Now they look ready. They come to the surface. So I'm going to turn the heat off, and I'm going to drain them with the all the water, and we can set them. And now we want to do it in a very simple way, just with the olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and sprinkle with a bit of parmigiano. That was my request, I enjoyed. Yes, so we can do with the butter and sage, with the light tomato sauce, or oh, if you are in Livorno, with the ragu. <laughs> so what do you think, Siri? Well, I love local ricotta. Um, our ricotta is, is quite light and um, so. They're heaven. And um, if you serve them like this, they're a light meal. And perfect for springtime, really. Um, well, it was springtime. Yes, it is springtime. It's not sure outside. It looks like spring. But. It, it was. It was beautiful weather. <laughs> and then um, it's now got cool again. So, um, one doesn't know, really. <laughs> and now our experiment is the noodle without the flour. And uh, we see what happens. If it is in the grates or... I don't know. It's very sticking to the thing there. Okay, first thing sticks to the schimarola. Are you cut it off? Yes, better to wiggle it a little bit. Okay, still together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, came to the surface. Shall we put it in your plate, Celia? <laughs> Put it on the plate. So we need olive oil and parmigiano. Okay, so second test. <laughs> First of all, is it together or is it kind of. Uh, no, it's together. together. I've just broken it, but okay. it was together perfectly. So what's the point of the flour round? So it's a philosophical question. <laughs> it's a bit lighter without the flour. Hmm. It's good. It's good. Okay, buon appetito. I think it's personal choice at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Pietra Santa. We had a good stop in Pietra Santa. And uh, we had a little walk uh, around this beautiful town. Pietra Santa, which is uh, just inland from Via Reggio, and it's known for its sculptures. And it always has these outdoor exhibitions. And today uh, we have a little giraffe. I think I'd like one in my garden. Michelangelo signed two contracts here for his works in Florence. A very good businessman.
If you enjoy our videos, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps us enormously with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much.